All right, the Synod is still enjoying Days of Decision 2, despite itself. Um, we are in midway through the third turn of the game. It's 1936. It's May and June, so I guess it's probably like the last week in May, first week of June is where we're at. We've done all the political stuff, about to do some maneuvers. There's not going to be a lot of maneuvers going on, and then a, a little bit of production, and we'll go on to... Uh, July and August, which is nice. It's one thing that's nice about July and August is the weather is going to be clear no matter what we roll. We had we had mud and then mud and winter before that, so it's pretty nice that um, we're, we ha we have some clear skies ahead of us. Let's take a look at where we are. So I guess we'll look at the political map first. Um, here we see France, Social Democrat, uh, England or the Commonwealth, moved to Social Democrat as well. They started out as a free market uh, government, uh, democracy. Um, France is stacked with Czechoslovakia. It got a bunch of alliances there. England is currently stacked with Belgium. Um, so it's going to be nice for both of them. They each get kind of a little benefit there. France is going to... There was Czechoslovakia, right? Yeah, France gets to use Czechoslovakia's factory and their resource here. And then England gets to use Belgium. Does Belgium have anything? Yeah, gets to use their resource there, but they have to send some boats out to transport the resources across the English Channel. Um, likewise, Italy is stacked with Hungary over here, has a couple alliances with them as well. So they're going to get to use Hungary's uh, resources there. Now, if Italy were at war with both Austria and Yugoslavia, I don't think they'd be able to use those resources because there'd be no way to get them to Italy. I, oh, I guess you could go through. You'd have to be at war with Switzerland and France, too. So as long as there's some route, some peaceful route to go, um, you can get those resources. So that's nice for Italy, uh, especially since Italy just bumped up its production. A lot of people have bumped up their production. Italy's at the maximum Italy can get without being at war with a major power at two. I think Germany's in the same place. Um, Russia finally got to do a political action. Uh, it's the first turn of the game Russia's gotten to do that. France bumped up their production, and so did the Commonwealth. They went up to two. They're at their highest peacetime. So Commonwealth, Germany, and Italy are as strong as they're going to get without um, going to war. Uh, Japan, they bumped up once. Then this past turn, they decided to build a factory. So that factory will be here in six turns uh, early next year. Um, what else? Or will that be middle next year? Uh, that's, that's my... All right, so what else? Spain is moving towards communist. Um, we were seeing some a lot of countries on the cusp of being in the, the fascist bubble of power. Japan's been moving Siam over there. I think Germany's been moving the Baltic states. Um, Italy just moved Hungary, of course. And that's about it on that side. No one's really moving towards the the de democracy, except for Yugoslavia, moved a little bit that way. Other than that, things have kind of just been in the middle. Uh, most are in the middle here. If you notice, I don't have the counters on top of them anymore. That's, it's just a lot easier, especially if you're playing single player, just to have it on a sheet of paper and write down things. You can't visualize it as well, but I figure if you have a stack of counters, it's really hard to visualize it anyway, so I can always just look uh, using the paper. That, that works better for me. Um, Germany's had the political... The, here's our initiative chart here. So if you see here, Germany's at the top, then Japan, then Russia, then uh, Italy used to be at the top next to Germany. Italy's dropped down a lot. That's kind of the big story. And then Russia's risen up. Russia's been kind of just saving up bid points. They had a very low production to start with, um, but finally are able to do some, some political stuff and maybe we'll get to do more. Nice thing is once you get up here, you get a bonus on your next bid. So it's easier to kind of keep momentum. Uh, provided you have the money. The problem is, is a lot of the things people are wanting to do cost a lot of money. Like we've had a lot of production bumps. Um, those cost seven for Italy. I assumed it was 10. I needed, I was doing 10 for everyone. So I need to make some adjustments here. Yeah. So England's 10, Russia's 10, Germany's 10. I didn't notice that France is a little different. So I owe France and Italy some money there. Um, I'll look at Japan later, see if I owe Japan some money as well. Um, so here's our money track. We see here that Germany is negative, I think negative 12. Yeah, because we have, here's the tens place. Is it negative 10 and negative 2? That's negative 12. Uh, Italy is going to be at negative, was it 3 difference? 
Yeah, negative 11. I think I did that twice, didn't I? Yeah, so Italy's going to be at negative 8. So I'll just take that down to there. That's not too bad. Um, and then France is currently going to be at negative 8 as well. So most people are in debt, except for U.S. and China. U.S. and China, they've been kind of behaving differently than the rest of the world, which kind of makes sense. They're sort of in their, especially the USA, is sort of in their own bubble, and USA is making choices for China here. All that, all that uh, USA has been doing is just adding tanks, and same with China. If you don't know, the, the same player plays both sides in the game. Um, however, there could, I mean, China's in the thick of it here. There, there could be some conflict Although Russia hasn't been doing any buildup of forces, Japan has, and Japan has been spreading down this way. Uh, interesting over here, Australia, that's Commonwealth, three resources, that's pretty nice. Uh, Commonwealth has been vacating Australia, moving its forces gradually back home, has some, some forces, like it's moving forces to Gibraltar here, and then from Gibraltar back into the United Kingdom. So that's kind of been the main movement. Otherwise, on the map, the only other kind of really interesting thing is Italy. Italy was in a big war with uh, Ethiopia. Finally won the war, but at the at a great cost of Italian lives and uh, treasure. So, but on the bright side, here's Ethiopia. Look at that. That's pretty nice. So now that was that ended the the only war that was going on on the globe. So everyone's at peace now in days of decision, um, and that's, that's kind of a nice place to be. We'll see what happens in the near future.